Oh, it is time. Well, hello, everybody. Um, I always find this a very interesting class. I mean, so many classes are interesting, right? But um, this is a, definitely an interesting part of history that we're talking about. And we're going to see uh, everybody almost, I would think everybody has heard about the Crusades, knows a bit about the Crusades. Um, and we're going to see a bit more about it. And we're going to also look specifically how this affected the Jewish community. Um, so let's start. In the year 1095, the Byzantine emperor Alexios sent an ambassador to Pope Urban II requesting military support in Byzantine's conflict with the Turks. The next year, the Pope responded in 1096 by calling Catholic Knights to join in, in what later became known as the First Crusade. Amy, if she wants to read. Amy, you're there, right? I saw you uh, came in. Urban's goal was to take Holy Land from the Muslims and thereby granting safe access for Christian pilgrims to their holy sites. For the Pope, the Jews were not part of the target. He did not command Crusaders to kill any Jews. However, some Crusaders had their own ideas about it. I, I'd like to uh, first look what what really the causes of the Crusades. Why? What was driving uh, them? I mean, it's just to understand history a bit. It's not perhaps so um, relevant for the texts, but maybe it is to some extent. Can you do this one too? Sorry, yeah. Can, yeah. <laughs> uh, sorry. Counter jihad. Right. Okay. Continue. During the last four centuries, Islam had, has, had swallowed up huge territory from the Christian world. It had taken over important centers of Christianity, as well as major Christian holy places. Furthermore, Islam was regularly posing a threat to Constantinople. There was a feeling that something had to be done. The growing success of the Reconquista in Spain and the recent success of Byzantine Emperor Basil II were encouraging and strengthened the belief that the Muslim enemies could be driven back. Oh yeah, I hear you much better now. Do you know what Reconquista means? Um, I think it, does it just mean reconquer? Yeah, absolutely. But so that means that the, you can probably guess already that gradually um, Christian kingdoms in the north of Spain were reconquering parts of uh, the Iberian Peninsula uh, gradually uh, from, the, from the Muslims, right? Yeah. That's clear, right? The second uh, cause, uh, aspect, or let's say circumstance that caused, that led to the, um, to, to, the, to the Crusades. Channeling energy outward. Warfare was deeply ingrained in society. Learning swordsmanship and other fighting techniques were from part of the education of, the, of young noblemen. Ideals like bravery, heroism, valiance, and courage were highly valued. Yeah, you can understand if you uh, are... are, are, are raised that way and trained that oh this is a good move this is this you're training to to go to war and then if it's all theory that you know you, you then you are almost itching to go to war because that's where you're, where you're training for the whole time uh-huh it was quite common for noblemen knights and kings to try and extend their power through violence against each other yeah that too so you had uh, all these 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 barons basically with their own territory and what, what people do is fight each other, but even more so. And even against the peasants that lived in the competitors. So let's say you have a neighboring knight and you're a knight and it's like, well, I want to get to this guy. You know what? He gets all his, uh, you know, uh, traditionally you had a, a, a count or a, or, 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 or a, um, or a, well, somebody else, a marquis or, a, or another type of baron that had a territory and on his territory lived peasants and they were farming and they're giving part of the harvest to you and that's how you have your um your income and your task is to protect the peasants but what people did is like let's get to this neighbor um and you know how we're going to get him we're going to kill all his peasants people just did that look here's an image of people raping and murdering and looting these poor people who just live there just because the, neighbor, uh, the neighbors uh, don't like them, yeah? The church had tried to promote a so-called truce of God or peace of God, encouraging the limitation of violence, but without much success. That just means 
uh, no, we're all Christians and we shouldn't fight each other. So Christians shouldn't kill Christians. But of course they did uh, constantly. The Crusades offered an opportunity to the Crusades offered an opportunity to channel the warlike energy of the competing knights outward. Yeah. So instead of fighting against each other, what if we should find a common enemy and then they focus on fighting them? That will be maybe better, uh, politically speaking, and for the society uh, in general. And now there's a third um, cause, basically. Millenarianism, expecting the 1,000-year kingdom of God. Western European societies had gone through major changes. There had been an explosion of the population. The land could not support all these people as farmers, so many left the villages for growing cities. Yeah. The result was avid poverty, diseases, plagues, and desperation. Yeah. As society was breaking down, many anticipated some divine intervention. Something radical had to happen. When the news spread that God had ordered the Pope to, denounce the, to announce the crusade, the desperate people clung to the belief that God's kingdom would, would be realized soon. Yeah, so, ah, oh, if the Pope says it, and he's a tool of God, then it must be, then God wants us to go on crusades, then something's going to happen. We are waiting for this change, and this is the time. All they had to do was obey the call of God and go to the Holy Land, and he would give them victory over the Muslims. Jerusalem would be liberated, Jesus would return, and they would be rewarded and reign with him. Yeah, so it's basically saying that because of all that's going on, they have to go back to Jerusalem because of all the, the bad crops? Now, first of all, before Islam, uh, as you know, um, the Holy Land had been part of the uh, Byzantine Empire, right? So the Christians had owned, is not the right word, but uh, uh, the Holy Land, including Jerusalem, had been part, had been under the Christians, and they had lost it. So, um, and now, but Christians still go on pilgrimage to Jerusalem. Sometimes they're harassed uh, by, uh, by Muslim, uh, maybe tribes or whatever it is, the idea is that, uh, and, and Byzantine is getting smaller and smaller because the Muslim armies and, uh, uh, and powers are eating up more and more of it. So also there have been the whole Mediterranean uh, was basically mostly under control of, of Muslims. And they had been raiding Italy and having gone up the Tiber uh, River and even had the... Uh, uh, looted uh, Rome for a while. So they actually were in the Vatican and, and taking, that's what I, what I read. I mean, but um, so it became really close to home. So if they would continue, what if uh, Europe could go, fall? The idea is what, pe what the commoners felt, society is not, is, cannot be this way. This is like we're, going through all these changes and uh, balance is gone and there's poverty and there's, this seems to be the end of time. A lot of, when there's, when there's hardships, uh, okay. every time people think, oh, this must be the end of time. And now the Messiah has to come because this is cannot be sustained. So uh, Christians also believe that the Messiah has to come means he has to come back, but it's the same, the same desperation, right? So they thought, ah, but now the, the Pope is saying we should go to Jerusalem, and this must be God's sign that that the uh, that that the messianic era is gonna come. Okay. Thank you. Uh huh. I'll, I'll finish this, maybe, uh, Amy. Okay. Urban had env envisioned an army of knights, and in exchange for their participation, Pope Urban II pledged that anyone who participated would be forgiven of all their sins. The buzzword that went around was "De vu." De vu. De vu. Yeah. Yeah, you sometimes hear that still from extreme right uh, groups. Okay, um, maybe I'll go to, is Christina there? Yeah. Hi, Christina, would you like to read a bit? Okay. Different bands of crusaders were formed, but to urban surprise, these were not just knights. A hermit by the name of Peter traveled through several European countries and enticed people to join the crusade. A millenar millenar 
millenarian. That millenarian. means people are way are millenarian. Somebody who anticipates the um, messianic era, which supposedly supposed to last for a millennium, meaning for a thousand years. Millenarian fever, meaning the anticipation. A millenarian fever took hold of the population. Tens of thousands of people from all different classes, many of them wretched and poor, took up the cross. For that reason, part of the First Crusade would later be known as the People's Crusade. Many of these crusaders were poor and did not have the means to sustain themselves during the long trip to the Holy Land and often pillaged the countries through which they traveled. Yeah, if they're all hungry, they don't have, the, they don't have a charge card on them, you know. So uh, they have to eat. They have no money because these people were poor. They thought, we poor, we have nothing to lose. Let's just go to the Holy Land. But then they have no clue how far that is. So they've never maybe been outside of their village. So now they walk for three days and they think, are we there yet? And um, so they have to eat. So eventually I thought, well, those people will ask people for food, but they don't give it. And then there are the ideas, well, we are, we are um, the soldiers of God, so they owe it to us. They're Christians and they have to support us. So in the end, they started just stealing from people and pillaging uh, villages and stuff, wherever they came. And people got really afraid of these, uh, of these um, groups of crusades, especially the poor, the poor people crusades. Mm -hmm. The First Crusade can be divided into mainly three subgroups. First, the so-called People's Crusade consisted of two main groups. First, the group led by Peter the Hermit, about 40,000 people. Second, a group led by Walter the Penniless. Members of both these groups were involved in Jewish massacres. Both these groups were massacred before reaching the Holy Land. So they actually, before they really got far, massacred Jewish communities wherever they could. And secondly, they were massacred themselves. They never reached uh, the land of Israel. Peter the Hermit's band of impoverished crusaders never made it to Jerusalem. Of the initial 40,000, only 30,000 made it alive to Constantinople. After they entered Muslim territory, his group was utterly defeated by the Turks. Most of them were killed and others taken as slaves. Peter himself did not make it to Jerusalem. No, he did. Other... He did make it. He said he did not make it, but it says did. Oh, Peter himself did make it to Jerusalem with other groups and back home in the West. He founded a monastery. Fun fact, he was most likely the one who introduced the rosary into Catholicism, taken from the Is Islamic Tasbih. Tasbih, very good. See on the right, it's a Tasbih, that's a Islamic rosary. And uh, according to tradition, he, he was inspired by when he saw that. So well, his people were, were killed, but he, he escaped and he met up with the other groups. And then he did make it to uh, Jerusalem and back. But as an individual, very, no one else of his group or hardly anyone else. Okay, we'll go to... Um, thank you so much, Christina. Is Marlene here? Yeah, I'm here. Hi, Marlene. Hi. Hi. Um, okay, I'll read. Surely, addition, thank you. <laughs> in addition, there are groups of Germans. This section is sometimes called the German Crusade. A group led, one, a group led by a priest called Volkmar, a group led by a priest called Gottschalk, a, a disciple of Peter, a group led by a count called Amicho of Leisingen, Leisingen, All these groups, uh, it's actually Leisingen. called Emiko. Are you going to have that, uh, oh. that, that name uh, again? So that's why I'm correcting it. Emiko of Leisingen. Okay. All these groups were involved in Jewish massacres. All these groups were massacred on their way through Hungary before even reaching Constantinople. Yeah, that is not very successful. So it's interesting. The majority of the people who went in crusade never actually made it there. Yeah. So here I have um, Emiko's... Uh, route and so he supposed to go uh to the south to the southeast right which is uh down to the left but he now you see all these um these cities that i have underlined 
So on the, on the top you have Cologne, and then you have Mainz, Worms, and Speyer. And these, uh, these towns had big Jewish communities. So they went to these communities and massacred the Jewish community. Now you see they're going from, this, from below to up. So they're going in the wrong direction. So their whole goal was not so much to, uh, initially at least, to reach the Holy Land. Their goal is really to deal with the, with the Jews. So why would you go opposite direction, right? If you want to go to, to, uh, to Jerusalem. All right, here you go. And this is what they would say. You are the descendants of those who killed and hanged our God. Moreover, God himself said, the day will yet dawn when my children will come and avenge my blood. We are his children and it is our task to carry out his vengeance upon you for you showed yourselves obstinate and uh, blasphemous. blasphemous towards him. God has abandoned you and has turned his radiance upon us and made us his own. Yeah. Thirdly, groups organized by night. This section is called the Prince's Crusade. Uh, this was the only one that was uh, successful. One, Hugh of Vermandois. Two, Godfrey of Bouillon. Bouillon. Yeah. Um, three, Bohemond of Taranto. Four, Raymond IV of Toulouse. Five, Robert, Duke of Normandy. These groups met up in Constantinople and went on to conquer Jerusalem. Yeah. So here you see they come from different directions. And so um, where you see where all these colors come together, you see Constantinople there. That's where they all met up. And then the green um, <clears throat> arrows, the green line, that is where they all were together. So they first conquered Nicaea. Then they conquered Edessa the next year, the same year Antioch, and then a year later Jerusalem. Yeah, there's a, a crusader song. I have the two. Um, it is, you want to read this uh, as part of the text, not the whole text? Crusader song by the Bot of Champagne. It is fitting that my heart is both joyous and dejected. Dejected for leaving my lady and joyous, desire, desirous to serve God, who is my heart and soul. This love is surpassingly true and powerful. Yeah. Lady of heaven, great powerful queen, greatly am I in need of support. May I be inflamed with love for you. When I lose a lady, by a lady may I be helped. Yeah, so um, so this was his whole, yeah, what you say. Now you can be courageous for a holy cause. And then there were fringe groups. For instance, there was a group called the Taffers, led by a king Taffer. They walked barefoot wore sackcloth, and they were known to eat their enemies after they defeated them. Yeah, so people were really afraid of them. They were like total savages. Right, okay. Stinky, dirty, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, thank you so much, uh, Marlene. Fa fabulous. Rabia, are you there? Yes. Okay, hi. Hi, Rabia. Um, maybe you want to read a bit. Sure. So the Jewish reports of the First Crusade are the Solomon Bar Simon Chronicle the Solomon Bar and the Main, Chronicle, Main right? Anonymous. And the Mainz Anonymous. Mainz is a town. So that, uh, that report was written in the town of Mainz. And, but it's by an uh, anonymous writer. We don't know who wrote it. So it's called the Mainz Anonymous. So let's start. to read a bit from the Solomon Bar Shimon Chronicle. And it's about the First Crusade. And most of this is about the First Crusade. Um, we're going to get a, hear a little more about the Second and Third Crusade uh, in, um, in a later class. But the First Crusade was, for the Jewish community, the worst. So that's why. Okay, the First Crusade of 1096. Here we go. And now I shall begin to relate how destruction came upon the congressional who let themselves to be slain for the sake of the name of the eternal and how with their whole souls they clung to the eternal the god of their four, forefathers and how they acknowledge him the one with their last breath it came to pass in the year 1456 which is the year 1901 which is the year 1096 according to the calendar of the nation in that year we were expecting consolation and redemption from our exile based on the prophecies in 
Jeremiah. And Jeremiah. Joel turned into sorrow, mourning, and lamentation. Yeah. So they had, there was this, supposedly this uh, expectation that that year would be a year of redemption. Somebody had calculated something, I guess. But that didn't really work out. Can you see this slide? It was the impious Pope Urban um, II of the Rome who arose and issued a call to the all to call to all the peoples, the son of Iran, who believed that the Christ bid them to gather and fare to port toward Jerusalem and conquer the city in order, in order that they might, might freely go to the pilgrim pilgrimage to grave of him. To the grave of him whom they have made their God. So, you see, the yeah, we saw was obeyed, and the nation gathered and their numbers. Yeah. The number, their numbers were as the sand of the shore, and their voice were like the roar of the storm. So huge masses of people. You see, before the sons of Edom, we spoke in the beginning of the course. We saw that Edom stood for, Christi yeah. for Christianity, right? So sons of Edom. Okay, so, um, all right, we'll continue. Um, okay, so, uh, Rabia, can you see this slide? Okay. It was then that, then that there was a rose that the Duke God pray of Lillian, may his bone be crushed. A ruthless man driven by the spirit of evil to join these lawless hordes. And for he saw a gray oath that wherever he came, he would revenge the blood of his God upon the blood of Israel. And leave no remnant nor a, refu a fugitive of our people. I am not sure if this is true. This is written by uh, by uh, whoever wrote this. Um, and um, but it's it's easy to understand that if you your communities have been massacred by by crusaders, that you think they're all the same. Supposedly, this one was not. Um, Godfrey of Bouillon supposedly did not uh, try to do that. He also. Uh, but I'm not sure that he was really friendly towards uh, Jews either, because who was? Okay, Ayali, do you, um, would you like to uh, read the next? Yes. Uh, one person from our side stood up and tried to stop the danger. He feared God and was worthy of eternal joy. This was Rabbi uh, Kalanimo. Mm-hmm. The leader of the congress, con congregation, con congregation means community of minds. Of minds. Quickly, he sent messengers to the emperor, Heinrich, who had lingered in Italy for nine years. The emperor was enraged and sent letters to all the provinces of the empire, commanding and princes and governors and above all, do God, God pray to keep the peace and to protect the Jews to, and to grant them help and refuge against the rabble. Good. The impious Duke swore that it had never been in his soul to even pluck a hair from the Jews' head. Moreover, the con congress congregation. congregation of alone gave him 500 marks of five silver and the con congregation of Mainz gave the same amount and he pledged his honor to protect them and keep the peace by the way this image is of Godfrey of Bouillon the one on the horse who did uh, conquer Jerusalem mm -hmm. at the of course expense of much life many lives yeah this, here's a statue that's in Brussels, actually, in Belgium. Godfrey of Bouillon Bouillon would conquer Jerusalem, and he crowned it king of Jerusalem. After conquering Jerusalem, all Muslims and Jewish inhabitants were slaughtered. Some Jews, however, were taken alive and offered to Jewish communities for a ransom. After Godfrey's death in eleven in eleven hundred, uh, his brother Baldwin took over the new kingdom. Yeah, this is between these little um, arrows. So that means this is what I wrote to give you background information. This is not part of the 
of the report uh, written by the Jews. We're going to continue with that report now. Mm -hmm. but, he, but he whose name is peace had departed from us. He hid his eyes from his people and delivered them to the sword. No prophet nor seer nor any man, however wise or learned, can fathom why the sins of our people weighed so heavily that the holy congregations had to suffer as if we had committed mortal sins. But he is a, a just judge. We, we, we must have been guilty. Yeah, this is an idea like, okay, but God does only ju justice. So we, I don't know why we deserve this, but the person says, but we must have done something so wrong that we deserve this because otherwise God wouldn't allow it. So it's basically taking the blame on yourself, which is, um, I don't think anyone would deserve this. Okay, but um, bad things happen, right? Okay, continue. First, there was a lawless rabble of Christians, a raging mob of Frenchmen and Germans who had taken it into their minds to travel to the holy city and to drive out from there the sons of the Ishmael. They had fastened the cross upon their garments, both men and women, and they were numerous as lo locusts. Locusts, which is like grasshoppers. Upon the earth. Mm -hmm. One more, and then I'll pick someone else. Whenever upon their way they came by the cities where Jews lived, they said to each other, we have set out on such a long journey to visit the grave of our Lord and to take revenge against the Ishmaelites. Ishmaelites. Ishmaelites is another word for Arabs. But in our very midst uh, live the Jews who crucified him and killed him. Let us take revenge against them. Let, let's abil abil obliterate them from among the nations or else let them become one of us and accept their faith. So either they become Christians or we're going to just obliterate them, meaning uh, exterminate them. Let me see um, who is, uh, thank you so much, Nayali. Sylvia, you're there? Yep. All right, there we go. When the congregation heard such speech, they acted in the manner of, of our forefathers. They exercised themselves in penance and prayer and charitable deeds. But the hands of the holy people became weak. Their hearts lost hope and their strength expired. They hid themselves from the sword in their innermost chambers and humbled themselves with potential fasts. Penitential. Penitential fasts. Mm -hmm. Three days they fasted, both day and night, until their skin clung to their bones, and they were thin as twigs. They cried aloud and wept in bitterness of their hearts, but their father did not listen to them. He rejected the tent of Israel, and a cloud shrouded his con con countenance, countenance, his countenance, presence, basically. Huh? For this was already decided as punishment for old sins. He had chosen this generation because it had the strength to sanctify the unutterable name. The idea is there's an old, um, this is a, a theology that um, has been going on for a long time until recently that when people are suffer, it must be either for their sins or there's an old, there's an old bill standing out basically of other sins from the same community, but maybe from the fathers or grandfathers. And so this had to be paid. And he said, God chose this generation because it was so strong in their belief that they would actually not give in. They wouldn't even save their lives by conversion. Uh, they would just uh, pref prefer death. And that's why these people were chosen as the ones to pay the bill, basically, an outstanding bill. Now, it's a bit hard to, of course, maybe that gave people in those days comfort. Um, nowadays, people have a hard time thinking that way because if these people were so pious, why would they, out of all generations, be chosen to, 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 to be punished? So it's, um, it's, that is not a, uh, a thought that, um, but then, you know, that, that, that we should embrace, I think, or that it's, that it's hard, that's easy to embrace. But on the other hand, 
it becomes hard to say that this horrible suffering that they went through, as you're going to read, um, was basically just random. Yeah, people would li like to see uh, some kind of purpose in it. So in any case, it's uh, people thought this way until the Second, Second World War, uh, the Holocaust, and people said, look, nobody deserves this. So we cannot just say that this was somehow deserved. Uh, only very few people dare to say that and think that, but it's, uh, of course, outrageous. It's better just to say we do not understand uh, how this works, but there's no re But those are just evil people who did this. That's the answer. Okay. In that year, sorry for the digression. Yeah? In oh. that year, Passover fell on a Thursday for the first month of ER. Yeah, on a Friday. Friday. It was on the Sabbath, on the 8th of ER, and that the judgment can, can upon us. Came. Oh, came. Sorry, it cut out. The Crusaders joined with the townsfolk, arose first against the ho ho holy and pious congregation of Speyer, thinking to catch all in the house of prayer. But the Jews who got word of this rose early on Shabbat morning, prayed quickly, and left the house of prayer. When the enemy saw that their plan had failed, they fell upon the Jews and slew 11 of them. And this is how disaster began. Yeah, you see on the map on the left, on the bottom, that is Spire. So that's on the, that river that goes up, that is the Rhine. And so everything around that is called the Rhineland. So these are called the Rhineland massacres for that reason. Um, okay, Sylvia, next slide. When Bishop John heard this, he came with a large force and helped the community wholeheartedly. He brought them indoors and saved them from the murderer's hands. He arrested some of the townsmen and cut off their hands. Bishop John brought the remnant of the community of Spire to his fortifications. The Lord turned to them for the sake of his great name and the bishop hid them until the enemies passed. So that is, you see often that the leaders of the church, uh, they do not endorse this. So they actually try to, uh, to save the people. So far so good. Yes, but so that means inspire the first town here, that, uh, that worked well, right? So they were saved, uh, except for maybe a few individuals. Now it go, they go up, they go to Worms. Do you want to read this, uh, Sylvia? When the horrible news came to Worms that 11 men of, of Spire had been slain, the people of Worms cried to the Lord and raised a great and bitter weeping, for they saw that heaven was determined their destruction and that there was no way out, neither forward nor backward. So yeah, these people were, still they were protected, but still inspired were 11 people dead. But they're now coming to us, so who knows how that's going to end up. Right, so really, people were really freaking out, of course. Yes, continue. The congregation divided itself into two parts. One part fled for refuge in the bishop's castle, and the other part remained in their house, houses because the townsmen had promised them protection. Yeah, yeah. But these promises were false and treacherous, undependable, like a broken reed. The townsmen had an understanding with the crusaders that our name and our remnants were to be obliterated. Fear them not, they spoke to us, for whoever slays one of you will have to answer with his life. By fair speeches, they persuaded everyone to not flee. Relying on their faith, the Jews placed all their goods and precious things into the townsmen's hands. But after receiving the, their properties, the townsmen betrayed them. That is very tragic. I'm going to, um, thank you, Sylvia. Is Gabrielle here, Gabriella? Don't think so. Imoni, are you there? Yes, I think you are. Right, Imoni? Yes. All right. On the 10th of IR, these d desert wolves attacked those who had, the remain, who had remained in their houses and exterminated them. Men, women, and children, young and old. They hurled them down the stairs, hacked them, down in their houses, plundered and looted. They stole the Torah scroll scrolls and stamped them into the mud, teared and burned them, and left death and horror where the children of Israel had dwelt. Mm -hmm. They took Isaac ben Daniel and asked him, do you want to give up your religion for ours? He said, heaven forbid that I deny my God, in him shall I trust, I shall commend to him my soul. They put a rope around his neck and dragged him through the entire city, through the mud of the streets. Sorry. 
they're doing housework in my house. What? Work, work. They're doing housework in my apartment. So. Oh, no. Go well, okay. Uh, luckily, okay. they're not crusaders banging on your door. <laughs> okay. Uh, where was I? Drag me through the entire city, through the mud of the streets, up to the place of their idolatry. His soul was still bound with his body. They said to him, you can still be saved. Do you want to convert? He signaled with his finger, for he was unable to speak, as he had been strangled, indicating, cut off my head. So they severed his neck. Right. Um, okay, we're going to see if it's how it works with the second slide, okay? On the, 12th, on the 25th of ER, terror came over those who had taken refuge in the house of the bishop. The enemies tortured them like the others and delivered them to the sword. But they had been strengthened by the example of their brethren and accepted death and sanctified God's name. They, stre they stretched forth their, neck, their heads to be decapitated in the name of their creator, and many took their own lives in the lives of their dearest ones. Yeah, now it gets really freaky because people start killing themselves before they fall in the hands of the crusaders yeah one slew his brother another his kins his kinsmen or his wife and children Bride bridegrooms slew their brides and tender mothers the little ones all accepted from the death of their hearts the judgment of god and commended their souls to their maker they cried in a loud voice hear o israel the lord is our god the lord is one the enemies stripped them naked and dragged and hurled them about I'll give you one more. They left none except a few whom they forced to accept baptism. 800 was the number of the slain on these two days. Naked, they were thrown into a common grave. They fell by the hand of God. He brought them to their rest, to the great light in the Garden of Eden. Behold, their souls are bound in the covenant of life unto the end of days with the Lord who made them. Yeah, what, I, what strikes me is now they, people are, out of their religiosity, they drag, they put God in this equation because that's you know, what gives meaning to them. But they fell by the hand of God. It's like you're almost saying God did it. You know what I'm saying? This is the whole thing that if, uh, is, is there free will or is, or is God responsible for everything? Now mm -hmm. you're going to say that God is responsible for this. It's very hard to swallow that. Um, once again, maybe people in another time, pre-modern, with thought that was comforting, and um, God did it, and he took them nicely into heaven, but on the other hand, you're, you're I mean, it's, it's, you understand, right? It's kind, of, um, it's kind of freaky to say God. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's not how modern people, most modern people will not be comforted by that thought. Because if that's what God does to his beloved, why would I even want to be religious, you know? Right, let's, uh, let's stay away from religion. We won't have the persecution either, maybe. All right. In any case, something to think about. I will go. Uh, thank you so much, Imoni. Um, <laughs> I, th I saw Menachem, so maybe you want to read. Okay. When the pious men of the, co of the great con congregation of Mainz. Mainz? Mainz. Of Mainz, the shield and refuge of our exile, famous throughout the land. When they heard of the slaughter of the saints in, in Spare and Worms, they were, the, they were at first stricken and their hearts turned to water. They cried to God with a great cry. Yeah, as you see, that's the one on the, on the map. First, the bottom was fire, worms we just had. Uh, people killed themselves uh, to not fall into the hand of the, of the, of the uh, crusaders, but also the people that stayed in their houses uh, counting on protection had been all massacred. Um, so um, now we go to Mainz, they're approaching Mainz. What's happening there? Mainz was probably the, the biggest, most important center of Jewish, uh, the biggest commu Jewish community of the Rhineland at the time. Yes. Thereafter, they met together and chose wise men from their midst to take counsel on, the evil, on how the evil might be averted. Their chosen men determined to ransom the lives of the congregation by giving their entire fortunes as bribes to the princes, the governors, the bishops, and the counts. The heads of the congregation who, who, who were well respected at the bishop's court went there and spoke to him and to the officers of his household and asked him what they should do to escape the fate of the brethren in spare and worms. Yeah, let's discuss it. What can we do? The bishop says, 
The answer was, take our advice, bring all of your fortunes into our treasures, and you, with your wives and sons and daughters, and all of you, and all who are with you, come into the house of the bishop and stay there until the crusaders, until the crusaders have moved on. Thus you will be secure. This is, this is what they told them, but their words were lies. Yeah, I'm not sure if the bishop really lied, or did he hope it would work, <clears throat> but it didn't work. They brought us into their power. They caught us like fishermen catching fish with a net to rob us of our money, as they did afterwards. Only the bishop was honestly inclined to put forth his power in our favor. But had we not given him and his stewards great gifts for, their prom for the promises to protect us, but in the end, neither bribes nor pleas could be of help, nor did they protect us from, from when the wrath came. Right. It was on the first day of the month of Sivan that Count Amico, the oppressor of the Jews, made his bones be crowned in the mill of iron, came with soldiers and crusaders and villagers and took up his tent outside this and set up his tent outside the walls of the city for the gates had been locked. He was our worst enemy who had no mercy, neither on old men, nor on virgins, nor on suckling babies, nor the sick. He was determined to crush God's people to dust. He put our youths to the sword and ripped open the bellies of our women who are with child. Yeah, bad, bad person. He wore a crusader's cross and was an army and was an army leader. He pretended that a messenger of Christ had appeared to him and placed a sign upon his flesh. Also, that messenger had promised to wait for him in Sicily, where he would where he would crown him emperor as a sign that his enemies were defeated. He besieged the city for two days. When they learned of the arrival of this wicked one, the elders of the congregation of Mainz rushed once more to the bishop and bribed him with 300 marks of fine silver to remain in the, to remain in the city, for his plan had been to visit, the, to visit the villages of his district. He invited the entire congregation into the great hall of his palace and vowed to stand by them. Yeah, so he city's under siege, and he says, I'm going on a little... This is in trip right now. That doesn't make sense. So, okay. So at least everybody's in his house, in his palace. The count of the citadel too declared that he would protect the Jews until the crusaders would have moved on, but stipulated that the Jews were to bear the cost. To this, the Jews agreed, and both the bishop and the count declared that they would, if need be, die with them. Well, that's a big promise. Furthermore, the congregation determined to give money to the wicked amigo as well, and to assure him a, and to assure him in writing that the other congregations would pay for would pay his way with equal honors. Perhaps they wrote, "God will show us mercy." Thus, they gave the bishop and his officers, and to the eldermen of the town, four hundred silver marks, and to the wicked amigo, they sent seven pounds of pure gold. But it was to no avail. Yeah, he probably did not refuse the money, but um, yeah. Okay, we'll do one more. It was on the third day of Sivan, which was a day of sanctification and separation for Israel, when the Torah was given to us. On this day, it was also granted to the Holy Congregation of Minds, separated and purified, to ascend to God together. In their death, they were not divided. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Let's see who we have. Brittany, I saw her. Yes, I'm here. Yay. Somebody's here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. All were in the bishop's great hall when the wrath of God arose against them like a flame. They were gathered together in one place. They had the Torah, greatness of soul, wealth and honor, wisdom and humility, charity and faith. All were cut down. They were destroyed as were the sons of Jerusalem when the temple of the, and the city fell. Yeah, there, this, this author is making a parallel, uh, comparing it with the destruction of, of Jerusalem. At noon, the croon Emiko. Emiko moved against the city with his hordes. The citizens opened the gates. Look, the gates are opening by themselves, said our enemies. This is the work of Christ, so his blood may be revenged upon the Jews. With flapping banners, the army drew up before the bishop's castle. But the sons of the Holy Covenant did not tremble in the face of these mighty numbers of the enemy. All of them, strong or weak, put in armor and girded on swords. Rabbi Kalonimus Kalon ben Meshulam led them. Rabbi Benachem ben da David Halavi, one of the great men of his age, said, let us sanctify the un un unutterable name in perfect devotion. Yeah, I imagine these uh, yeshiva uh, rabbis wearing knight armor to protect themselves. That's not 
it's a good effort, but it doesn't look like a successful uh, thing. Mm -hmm. Thereupon, they proceeded towards the gate to fight against the crusaders and the townsmen. Cruelly, the combat raged. But because of our sins, our enemies prevailed against us and streamed into the castle. The bishop's men, who had to help us, fled and delivered us into the hands of the wicked. The bishop himself flew into his church, for they threatened him because he had spoken in favor of the Jews. Yeah, he's on a little stroll. May darkness devour the memory of our dreaded day. May God forget the name of, the, of that day and let no light shine upon it forever. Why were you not extinguished, O oh, you stars? Why were you allowed to light the earth for our enemies? When the sons of the Holy Covenant saw that their fate was about to be fulfilled, since their murderers swarmed into the, the courtyard, they raised their voices, old men and youths, virgins and children, men, servants, and maidservants, and wept. There was a certain man named Moses. He called his sons and said to them, My son, Simon and Helbo, at this moment, hell and paradise are open. Into which do you wish to enter? They answered him, Bring us into paradise. They stretched forth their necks. The enemy killed them, the father along with the sons. But they submitted to the decrees of the eternal and urged each other to take upon themselves the yoke of Israel's martyrdom. Martyrdom. So they're martyrs. martyrdom. Yeah, you know what martyr martyr is? A martyr is somebody who dies for the sake of his religion, basically. Their one deep fear was that the weakness of the human flesh under these extreme forms of torture might keep them from sanctifying the unutterable name. Therefore, they all cried as one man with a loud voice. We dare delay no longer, for the enemy is upon us. Let us hasten and sacrifice ourselves to the Lord. Whoever has a knife, let him slay us and then himself. Yeah, this is freaky, in my opinion. Um, it's all freaky, of course, what are you gonna do, but yeah, okay. The first upon whom the enemies came into the courtyard were some of the most devout. Among them, the great scholar Rabbi Yitzchak ben Moshe. These pious men had disdained to flee into the inner chambers in order to buy one more hour of life. Instead, they sat wrapped in their prayer shawls, ready to fulfill the will of their maker. The enemies first overwhelmed them with stones and arrows, then hewed them down with their swords. Yeah. I always get uh, shit. Every time I prepare this class, every time I teach it, and I go over these texts, I always get shaky. I mean, it's like, um, it's so incredibly horrible. Do one more, and then I'll go to someone else. This is it's getting worse. Okay. When those in the inner chamber saw the great patience of these saints, they cried, the time has come. The women girded their loins with strength and first slew their sons and daughters and then themselves. Many men, too, plucked up courage and slew their wives and their children and their servants. Gentle and delicate women slew their beloved children. Men and women slew each other. Yeah, can you imagine that? Ooh, okay. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Brittany. I believe Alex is here. Alex? Hello. Hello, Alex. Right, good, let's continue. Girls, young men, and women who were betrothed looked out of the windows and cried, See, O oh God, what we do to sanctify your holy name in order not to be forced to, to acknowledge the crucified. Some slew and some were slain. The streams of blood flowed and the blood of men were commingled with that of their wives, of fathers, with with that of their children, of brothers, with that of their sisters, of teachers, with that of their students, of children and babies, with those of their mother. Wow. All were slaughtered upon that day for the sake of, of the oneness of the awe-inspiring name of God. He who hears it is not his soul shaken, for has anyone in the ages seen anything like this? Ask if there was ever, since the day of Adam, a martyrdom like this. 1,100 were sacrificed in one day. Oh, oh, oh. Each was like the sacrifice of Isaac, the son of Abraham, which, which made the foundations of the universe tremble. Why, why then did not the heavens grow dark and the light of the stars go out and the sun and the moon die on the third day of Sivan when 1,100 souls were slain in martyrdom? Children among them, 
Oh, so many, and the little babies, the poor innocent, who have not yet sinned. Can you allow such things, O Lord? Were they not slain for your sake? Avenge, O Lord, the blood of your servants soon. In your days, our eyes for our eyes to see. Amen. It's hard that such a horrible thing happens, a massacre, to look at the star and that the sun is shining and, and the, the, moons are, uh, the moon comes up and the stars are out as if nothing happens. Yeah, the universe is, uh, just continues. And that's what he's saying. Why did not the sun you know, refuse to shine? Because how could the world go on after this horrible thing? Yeah, and it continues. We're not even there yet. Mm -hmm. um, did, did human ear ever hear a story like that of the young Rachel, the daughter of the rabbi, Yitzchak, Yitzchak ben Asher, and the wife of Rabbi Yehuda. I have four children, she said to her friends. Spare them not. Let the Christians not catch them alive and make them abandon their faith. Let them too sanctify the name. Oh, the poor children. But when one of her friends took took up the knife to slay one of the children, the young mother cried aloud and beat her head and chest. Where is your loving kindness, O Lord, she cried. In her despair, she spoke to her friend, please do not kill Isaac before the eyes of Aaron. He must not see his brother's death. But when little Aaron ran away, she nevertheless took Isaac, who was the younger one, a beautiful boy, and killed him. She caught his blood in her sleeves as into a jug. Aaron, seeing this, tried to hide behind a chest. The woman who had... The woman also had two very long, very lovely young daughters, Bella and Madron, Madrona. These bent... These bent back their white throats and asked her to sacrifice them. When she had slain three of her dear children, Rachel called out to her last child, Aaron, Where are you, my son? I dare not spare you. And by the foot, she pulled him from behind the chest where he had hidden and sacrificed him unto God. Yeah, it's very really crazy because... Human sacrifice is totally forbidden. So I mean, seeing this as sacrifice, it's a very weird. Look, there were also uh, these massacres on the Jewish community in, in Islamic lands, but remarkably, as far as we know, they never went to the point that they sacrificed themselves first or their children or their wives and stuff uh, because they believed then become Muslim outward, and then as soon as you have a chance, you go back to Christianity, to Judaism, sorry. But the Christian, the Jews of Christianity, of Christendom, did not, uh, it was even though outwardly converting was seen as a victory for the, but for the, for the, for the crusaders. Now I would say, all right, let them have the victory. We live and we can build our communities and our families again, but that was not how they thought. Um, do uh, just a little more. Alex. Oh, sorry. When her husband saw the death of his four lovely children, he threw himself upon his sword and his bowels oozed forth from his quivering body. Yeah, this is quite uh, cryptic. Uh -huh. the, mo the mother hid her dead children, two in each of her wide sleeves. And and sat down and lamented. When the enemies came into the room, they roared, give us the gold, you Jew wretch, which no doubt you have hidden in your sleeves. But when they saw the dead children, they struck down Rachel, the mother, with one blow, so she perished without a moan. Yeah. Thank you, Alex. Uh, Rachel, you there? I am here. Okay, Rachel, thank you. Please when the meet. Jews of Cologne heard that the communities had been killed, they all fled to Gentile acquaintances. They stayed there for two days of Shavuot. On the third day, early in the morning, the enemy rose up against them. They broke into the houses, taking spoil and booty. They destroyed the synagogue, took out the Torah scrolls, and desecrated them. They trampled them in the streets. On the very day when it was given on Shavuot, it was torn and buried and burned. The evil that 
and the wicked trampled it, and ruffians invaded and defiled it. Will you not repay them for such deeds? So now they went to Cologne, which is further north. The community in Regensburg was converted in its entirety, for the townsmen saw that they could not be saved. Indeed, when the crusaders and the common folk gathered against them, those who were in the city pressed them and brought, and brought them to a certain river. They made the evil side of the cross over the water and baptized them all together in that river. Immediately after the enemies of God passed through, the Jews returned to the Lord and repented. What, what they had done, they had done under great duress. Yeah, so they've almost excusing like they were really under a lot of pressure. But it's interesting, the people in Regensburg tried to save the Jews, and they actually said, well, we'll, we'll baptize you, and then when they're gone, you can be Jewish again, and that's what happened. So they, um, that, was, uh, that was interesting. They actually persuaded the Jews and let them go back. There's a poem by David bar Meshulam on the First Crusade. Want to read a bit of that? Sure. Uh, yearling lambs without blemish were slaughtered like whole offerings, trapped and burned like sacrificial portions of shared offerings. They said to their mothers, do not be moved by pity. Heaven has summoned us to be offering fi by fire to the, law to the Lord. Priestly servants authorize women to act like men. They sacrifice, they make sacrifice as and offerings, acts of slaughter, sprinkling, and receiving blood. There's also some criticism. A certain rabbi who slaughtered many children during a period of forced conversion because he feared that the Gentiles would convert them. There was another rabbi with him who was exceedingly angry at him and called him a murderer. Nonetheless, he was adamant. The second rabbi said, if I'm correct, let this rabbi die in an, in an unusual way. And so it happened. Subsequently, the pr uh, persecution stopped. If he had not slaughtered those children, they would have been saved. Meaning he killed his children, but then... The enemies didn't even make it there. They were approaching, but they didn't. They, he, he was starting to slaughter people just to uh, avoid them from being uh, converted, but they actually went to another town. Uh, this is, I mean, beyond horror, of course. Yeah, and then also Chacham uh, Shaul Levi Mortera, who lived in Amsterdam, but much later, but he, he was confronted with this phenomenon of killing yourself in the, before being converted. This is ac actually a painting of his by, um, a real painting by Rembrandt, who, who painted him. And he said the following. Uh, the path of becoming martyrs voluntarily is a diabolic and pagan doctrine full of hidden poison, accepted under the cloak of perfection and holiness. It goes against the will of God. Yeah, that's in his uh, treatise. Now there is Maos Tsuri. This is a song which is uh, written during the Crusades. And it's sung during Hanukkah, and most people don't know that this is really an anti-crusader, anti-Christian song. If you don't pay a lot of attention to the words, you will not, uh, it's a bit cryptic sometimes. But well, let's look at it. Um, just read the English, perhaps. Yeah. Refuge of rock, my salvation. To you it is proper to offer praise. Prepare the house of my prayers, and there I will offer Thanksgiving offerings. When you prepare a massacre for the barking oppressor, and we shall conclude with Psalm, a song for the inauguration of the altar. The whole thing is beautiful, except that one uh, line in bold. You would think when you, so uh, people sing it with their families, not knowing. This is the next holiday on the list of holidays. And that's all wonderful. But then you sing with you, you don't realize it. You let your children sing, when you prepare a massacre. Uh, it's kind of weird. The barking oppressor is, I'm sure, are the crusaders who are, um, Deus vult, Deus vult. You know, God wants it. Okay, we continue. This is, the, 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 this already gives it away. Now, the second uh, stanza is about the oppression by Egypt. Want to read this? My soul was full of misery. My strength was spent with grief. They embittered my life with hardship when I was enslaved under the rule of Egypt. But God, with his mighty power, brought out his treasured people, Pharaoh's army, and all, his of, all of his offspring sank like stone into the deep. Yeah. So this is, but the, the exodus from Egypt is a, is, a, is, a, is a central theme in all Jewish uh, prayers almost. Delivers, he delivered the Jews from slavery and now we are his people so that is not so strange that that is in there but then it uh, goes to another oppression oppression later by the babylonians mm -hmm. 
He brought me to his holy abode. Even there, I found no rest. The oppressor came in and exiled me because I served strange gods. Yes, and drank idolatrous wise. Yet sacredly, I had gone into exile. And the end of Babylon, Zerubbabel took charge. By the end of 70 years, I was saved. Yeah, Zerubbabel, we met already. But uh, the end, Ketz, Babel, Zerubbabel, look at Shiva Imjno Sha'ati. You know maybe the text? The word Ketz means end. And the word Ketz is, uh, appears more. Uh, so the end. Uh, Scarcely, I had gone into exile, but already, like, uh, what is it, seven years later, 50 years later, uh, there was the uh, possibility to go back to Jerusalem and to rebuild the temple. But, uh, oh, 70 years, it says it there, yeah. Now, so the, the next oppression was by the Persians. This is the story of Haman. The Agagite son of ha Hamadatta. Hamadatta, oh, plotted down the proud Mordechai, but it's proved a snare to him, and... It, his insolence was silenced. You raised the head of the Benjamite, but you blotted out the enemy's name. His numerous sons and his households hanged upon the gallows. So it is, first is an introduction. Take care of these, uh, this, this horrible, these horrible people. Um, but then it is the oppression of Egypt, as of Babylonia, the oppression of the Persians. So every time there was oppression and it, it all ends with the delivery. The next one is, uh, the oppression by the Greeks or the Hellenists, and that is the central theme of Hanukkah, of the holiday when, you, when, when it, it, this is uh, sung. Bec um, do you mind continuing? No, I don't mind. Um, okay. The Hellenists gathered against me in the days of the Hashmonaim. They broke down the walls of my towers and defied all the oils. But from the last remaining flask, a miracle was wrought for the Jews. Therefore, the sages ordained eight days of song for songs of praise. Yeah, so the, you would think this is the end because this is Chanukah, but now this is the last one. And for uh, the, the sixth and final stanza was only not published, only not, that's wrong, was not published for centuries. The first time it was really published was when it was printed in 1702. That's almost 500 years after it was written. Uh, how, however, is it written later, the, the sixth stanza? Scholars will think that it is so integral to the to the song that they believe it was it, it was part of it but was just not printed or not uh, published um, because it's uh, so clearly anti-christian so we have the depression of the uh, egyptians the depression of the babylonians the depression of the persians the depression of the hellenist greek now the depression by the christians and so uh, that's really the final stanza depression by the christians now read this carefully expose your holy arm that says Chet Zayin Kuf, the blue letters, that really means be strong. Vakarev Kates Hayushua, we people translate it as bring back the time of deliverance. But Kates means the end. How is that the end of deliverance? Bring the end of deliverance. You want the beginning of the deliverance. But Yeshua means deliverance, or, but also means Christ, Jesus. So bring the end of the Christian era, the end of Jesus, basically, of the Jesus reign. Avenge the abuse of your servants from the wicked nation. That is uh, the people who, are, who we're talking about when this song is written, which is in the time of the Crusades. For ki ha because the Yeshua has lasted already so long. That is not uh, because the... the, the Redemption has lasted so long. It's the Yeshua means the, the time, the, the Christian uh, dominion has lasted long. And there is no end, and here is end. The end case, Lime Hara'a, there is no end to the days of misery. Um, reject. The Che Admon, Admon actually means Edom, the same uh, letters. And we know that Edom stands for Christianity. But Tzel Tzalmon, Tzel is shadow, in the shadow of Tzalmon, Tzalmon means idol or also used for the cross. Uh, the Tzalem, so uh, an, an, an image of God, which is for, the, for Christians, Jesus is an image of God. Hakeim Raishiv'ah, that has to do with, with another text that's not related to the Crusaders. Now, interesting that Mao Sur has such an anti-Christian message, but the, the tomb is a Christian song. Uh, that the, the tune that is mostly sung, there's different tunes, but most people sing the same song, and this, this is the song.
I'm going to uh, go to the next one. I, um, my edited mouse tool version, I'm, this is the last thing I'm going to do. Uh, and we have three more minutes, so perfect. Even though the theme and the request for vengeance is understandable in the context of great oppression, such as the time of the Crusades, I believe in our time it's more desirable to pray for a better future for everyone without the need for revenge. This is especially true and relations between Jews and many non-Jews have greatly improved. By the way, a Ma'os Sur is not given by Moses. It's not part of halacha, it's a tradition. Uh, and so um, there is no, it's not a holy song that cannot be changed or adjusted. We don't have to uh, uh, leave it as is because, you know, this is written by the writers of the Talmud, not at all. This is a medieval song and uh, there is no, uh, no taboo on changing it, so I changed it a bit. So for that reason, I have edited the traditional Maos Tour text to remove its vengeful twists. I left out the episode that relate to Babylonia and Persian oppression, because they do not really relate directly to the holiday of Hanukkah. So I left four stanzas. However, I did leave the second stanza about the delivery from Egyptian slavery, because this is a theme that's central to practically all Jewish prayers. And the uh, penultimate stanza, which is this, the one before the last, is of course there because it relates to Hanukkah, the, to the deliverance from the oppression of the Hellenists. Um, okay, so this, um, so there's, that's, uh, this revised version does not contain vengeful expectations, but anticipates the realization of Jewish dreams, which is a peaceful future for all people. And so this is the text that I have. The blue is what's, uh, what's changed. Refuse rock of my salvation, to you it is proper to offer praise. Prepare the house of my prayers, and there I will bring, offer thanksgiving offerings. When you will rejoice the heart of all that praise you, then shall we conclude with a psalm, a song for the inauguration. So it goes like this. <laughs> See, so that rhymes and it has the same meter and it works. But um, instead of prepare a massacre for the barking oppressor, I think my grandchildren, I prefer my grandchildren to... Uh, Thank, to thank God, to uh, be happy, uh, to look forward to a time when everybody will be rejoicing and happy over looking forward to a massacre, even though they don't even know what they're singing. But okay. Uh, the second one is uh, only a little bit different, it's practically the same, because the, the original says, <laughs> the army of a uh, uh, pharaoh and all his offspring sang deep, but it was not the end of a dynasty, so not all his children went down. So I changed it to, that was just not correct. So I changed it to Pharaoh's army and his arrogance sank into the depths like a stone. This one is uh, very different. The oppression was heavy under the hand of the Hellenists. You said salvation and the Hashemunians were victorious. Evil people were chased away. Idols were broken. Abraham's altar was rebuilt. The righteous rejoiced. Um, I could sing it, hold on. Etc. The fourth one, stretch out your holy arm and bring your redemption near. Rejoice the heart of your servants, rebuild the house of your glory, and dwell amid your people. We wait for your redemption. Make your name great for all the nations of the earth. So there's no re uh, reference anymore to, um, to, uh, to Christianity or to end Christianity. It's just only good stuff that's, that is predicted. 